please remain standing for our opening prayers. I now call on Father Harold Imamsha of the St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church. He'll be followed by Pastor Michael Brathwaite of West End Pentecostal Christian Fellowship Church. In the woods and prayers of a fisherman, I pray that I may live to fish until my dying day, and when it comes to my last cast, I then most humbly pray, when in the Lord's great landing net and peacefully asleep, that in his mercy I be judged big enough to keep. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments, in the storms that threaten us, we might not despair nor become despondent on the oceans of this life but with great confidence submit ourselves and our nets to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Shall we pray, please? Precious God and loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for the privilege and opportunity to come before Your divine presence. We come humbly, admitting that we are not self-sufficient and that You are all-sufficient. We come boldly and in faith, because Your gracious provision, Jesus Christ, our Paschal Lamb, whose blood stained the eternal heavenly altar, and who is at your right hand sitting, and is our advocate and making intercession on our behalf. The privilege to come is indeed not meritorious, but gracious. And so, dear God, we enter your gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, and into your courts with praise. Your awesomeness is everywhere a respect in every respect uncontestably praiseworthy and there is oh so much to thank you for as a nation and as a community thank you father for your mercy shown in preserving us many times from the devastation possible through natural disasters thanks for the degree of peace and prosperity that attends our nation and, and the multiplied ways in which this nation is blessed Notwithstanding the foregoing, there are areas of challenges and we need, that we need, that we have. And for these, we seek you in prayer. We thank you and pray for sustained, continued good governance, characterized by justice, integrity, and that of peace, safety, and economic prosperity. May it ever continue to attend us. We pray for those who are given the opportunity to lead us by your grace, favor, and blessing. May that leadership be characterized by justice and integrity, peace, and successful economic activity. Give wisdom to our leaders that will result in bountiful prosperity. We pray, O oh God, that you will always involve, be involved, guiding the results of our electoral processes so that the best possible leaders will be given the opportunity to lead us. And may you always give, us the wis give them the wisdom to lead, that this nation might continue to experience peace and prosperity, ever increasingly so. I pray that the scourge of violence and murder that now attend us, and even violence in our school, oh God, that you will help us to effectively address the same and bring it under control. For our homes, for our schools, for our churches, I most earnestly pray, and also for the government, so that by your grace and favor and direction, these challenges might be brought under control. Today, dear God, I am thankful for this occasion that is the ceremony that is now being enacted. To attend to it, bless it, and pray 
that you give it good success. I pray also for the facility that is being declared open today, that it may graciously that you may be graciously favored to us and bless it. In Jesus' name, may the economic activity it intends to be stimulated and facilitated be blessed and be made to prosper bountifully. Cause it to prosper as it provides a means of employment and economic opportunity for many. I prevail against, in your mighty name, dear Jesus, the attack of the adversary, who undoubtedly will seek to gain his own ascendancy and influence these activities with nefarious, diabolical outcome. Let all such activity in the name of Jesus be brought to naught. Bless and prosper this facility. Bless those who will make use of it in every respect. Bless our nation. Bless our leaders. Bless our community of carnage. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Yes, we may now be seated. Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Senator The Honorable Kazim Hossein, Minister of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries. Senator The Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts. Honorable Members of Cabinet, Parliament and the Senate. Ms. Kumari Gulab Singh, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries. Chairman of the Diego Martin Regional Corporation, Mr. Siegler Jack, Aldermen and Councillors, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman, UDICOT, Mr. Mika Charles Phillips, CEO, UDICOT, UDICOT Management and Staff, Members of the Village and Community Council, Father Harold Imamshire, Parish Priest, St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church, Pastor Michael Brathwaite, Senior Pastor, West End Pentecostal, Christian Fellowship Church, specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the National Public Viewing Live on DTT, Unicot's Facebook page, and listening on I-95.5 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the official opening ceremony for the Carinage Fish Fry. I'm your host, Mark Andre Augustus. To begin our proceedings, I now call on Mr. Siegler Jack, Chairman of the Diego Martin Regional Corporation, to deliver the opening remarks. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley. Prime Minister of Trinidad, of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Senator the Honorable Kazim Hussain, Minister of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, Senator the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Parliament and the Senate, Ms. Kumari Gulab Singh, Permanent Secretary, of the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, Aldermen, Councillors of the Diego Martin Regional Corporation, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman UDICAT, Ms. Tamika Charles Phillip, CEO UDICAT, UDICAT Management and Staff, members of the Village Community Council, Father Harold Imamsha, Parish Priest of St. Peter's R.C. Church, Pastor Michael Braffitt, Senior Pastor, Western Pentecostal Christian Fellowship Church, specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the national viewing public, live on TTT, UDICOT Facebook page, and the listening, and listening on I-95.5 FM. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Special welcome to our representative and Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, who only last night returned from 
his well-publicized mission abroad, and we pray and trust that all is well with you, sir. My simple but notable task here this evening is to welcome you to the opening of the Carnage Fish Fry, which forms part of the vision of expansion for the region of Diego Martin, and spearheaded by the representative of the Diego Martin West constituency, of whom we are very well pleased. This facility, as you can see, is situated next to the Carnage Fish Market, which was opened in 2020, and not only complement, but also adds value to the fishing industry in this area. The benefits of which will bring a level of both industry and commerce to our Burgesses, whom I trust will do their part in keeping this facility clean and tidy, and in so doing, making a worthwhile local and foreign tourist attraction. On behalf of the Burgesses of the Western Peninsula, and in particular, the Gomartin West constituency, and by extension, the Council of the Degomartin Regional Corporation, welcome and have yourself a safe and enjoyable evening. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jack. I will move up on the program. I call to the podium Senator the Honorable Kazim Hussein, Minister of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries, to bring us his remarks. Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and a Member of Parliament for Digo Martin West, the Honorable Senator Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, who is on his way, Senator the Honorable Avinash Singh, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Senator the Honorable Nigel Freitas, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. Members of the Cabinet, Members of Parliament, Ms. Kumari Gulab Singh, Permanent Secretary, Acton, at the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. Olaman Sigala Jack, Chairman of the Digo Martin Regional Corporation, Vice Chairman and all members of Council. Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Mika Charles, Philip, Chief Executive Officer of UDICOT, officials and staff of UDICOT, officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, Father Harold Imam Shah, Parish Priest of the St. Peter's RC Church, Pastor Michael Braffitt, Senior Pastor, West End Pentecostal Christian Fellowship Church, Specially invited residents of Digo Martin and environs, specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the listening and viewing public, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is indeed an honor and privilege to be part of this official opening ceremony of the Caranage Fishing Facility, Fish Fry. Firstly, permit me to congratulate our esteemed Prime Minister and a member of parliament for Digo Martin West, the Honorable Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, as it was his vision to have a facility of such as this one developed to enhance the fishing community of Carinage. <clears throat> this facility was the final piece identified by the Honorable Prime Minister, which would allow all stakeholders in the fishing sector to benefit from an all encompassing hub for fisher folk. At the opening of the fishing center in 2018, the Honorable Prime Minister pledged to provide a world-class facility 
with the aim of re re rivaling the renowned Oysters facility in Barbados, and we can see it here today. The intent was to encapsulate the use of, the f of fish and fish products in preparation of a variety of del delicacies in a scenic ambience inclusive of also of an, an entertainment center to attract patrons. The most importantly within close proximity to the major fishing hub that currently exists on the same compound. The Urban Development Comp Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, UDICUT, executing agency of this project was given the responsibility of ensuring that the Honorable Prime Minister's conceptualization became a reality. And as you and I can see, today we have delivered to a world-class facility which we can all be proud of. <laughs> Special recommendations must be given to the Chairman of UDICOT, Mr. Noel Garcia and his team for the exceptional work on this project. As the national community more so, specifically the community of Carnage, stands to benefit tremendously from this establishment. My cabinet colleague, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Senator the Honor Honorable Randall Mitchell, has already expounded on this facility's anticipated impact on tourism, visualizing the Karana's fish fry facility as a major tourist attraction for both domestic and international markets. Similarly, I can also attest to the many ways this project will positively contribute to the agricultural sector and bring modern modernity to the sector. As the first servant in the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, my focus is directed at improving and encouraging growth in our fishing sector. I want to let you know how valuable both the Carinage Fishing Center, the Carinage Fish Fry Facility will become our domestic market. At this said venue, the primary objective will be to provide higher quality products for consumers. This has been achieved through pl placing much emphasis on maintaining the cold chain's quality standard, as well as safety and sanitization at the center to be undertaken by the fisher folk community. Furthermore, continuous upgrades and improvements to, to the facility will position the Carinage Fishing Center as a major retail outlet for fish seal in this country. The Carinage Fish Fry Facility will allow consumers to purchase a variety of fish food delicacies made from the daily catch of the local fisher folk. This interaction, in our opinion, will therefore create a special relationship between fisher folk, consumers, and vendors, while also showcasing the availability of high quality local seafood products. In the light of the current crisis, such as the Russia-Ukraine war and the COVID-19 pandemic, we are all aware of the importance of supporting our local farmers, and the Agriculture Ministry also encourages all citizens to develop good agricultural practices, as this undoubtedly would build communities' resilience, encourage self-sufficiency, and lead to a healthier lifestyle overall. Rural communities are currently being prioritized and sustainable sources of employment have been developed with this objective in mind. As a member of this cabinet for five years, I can attest the government of Trinidad and Tobago is working assiduously to promote self-sufficiency and sustainability in the agricultural sector. This current initiative is an ideal example of systems that fulfills the broader objective of strengthening the domestic farm to market chain supply. Today's event is particularly important for the fisher folk community as ongoing concerns such as climate change affecting the marine environment 
places them as most valuable, and this can have direct Im impact in their livelihoods. As a country, we have to face all challenges together and continue to give support to each other in any way we can. In closing, I want to recognize the extended heartfelt congratulations to the 14 concessionaries who will be operating at this fish fry facility. You are the key stakeholders who will see this facility achieve what we've envisioned this for. We have given you a platform for growth and look forward to your continued success. The Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries remains committed in our efforts to stand ready to work with you to ensure the success of the Caranage fish fry facility. Lastly, I encourage everyone here to seize the opportunity before us and fulfill your roles with diligence and dedication to those around you. And may Almighty God bless us and the people of this beloved country. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Hussein. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly welcome to the podium, Senator the Honorable Randall Mitchell, Minister of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, to deliver his remarks. Thank you very much. Allow me to recognize uh, Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, my honorable cabinet colleagues and parliamentary colleagues, uh, Chairman of the Diego Martin Regional Corporation, Mr. Sigla Jack, all specially invited guests, Chairman, members and staff of UDICOT, a wonderful good afternoon. Honorable Prime Minister just mentioned to me that they almost left me out. I was obviously caught in some traffic. But Prime Minister, I sped here because I really wanted to know if the fry dry in Caranage in Diego Martin West is tastes as good as the fry dry and the fry fish at the King's Wharf in San Fernando. And if not, Prime Minister, we can assist by way of improvement. But I think... Um, I think, I think we're in for a treat. These types of um, facilities in the tourism sector form a major part of our tourism offering. And I want to, on behalf of the Ministry of Tourism, congratulate the people of Dago Martin and congratulate you, Prime Minister, for your vision and for your foresight in creating this tourism attraction. Of course, we in, in Trinidad and Tobago, we are known for our gastronomy. And we're really trying to build on our culinary tourism and to share that with the world. This has a major part to play, of course, in community development. I congratulate as well, and I join with Minister Hussein in congratulating the concessionaires, because they are to show the best of Trinidad and Tobago and the best of our culinary offerings. We have seen what these types of facilities, we've seen um, what fish fries um, do across the world and across the region. They're major attractions and what better place, what more beautiful place than here in Caranage to place one of these facilities here. These become major attractions during the weekends where, of course, we have this stage here, we have um, entertainment that could be done. We have arts and craft that could be sold. It is a major part and a major part in community development and bringing the people of Diego Martin West closer together and offering the best of Diego Martin and the best of Trinidad and Tobago to all who visit here. So I want to congratulate you, Honorable Prime Minister. I hope to come back here. I hope to try all of the offerings here. I didn't just come here for my belly. Of course, I came here, as I said, to join with you, Prime Minister, in opening this fish fry. Um, it, it is the envy of all of Trinidad and Tobago, as new as it is. 
So congratulations to you, Prime Minister. Congratulations to the people of Diego Martin. And congratulations once again. Thank you, Minister Mitchell. We will now have a video presentation which details the development of the Western Peninsula over the last few years. Western Peninsula Development. Over the past few years, the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago has been the steady driving force behind infrastructural and urban development across the landscape of Trinidad's Western Peninsula. These critically needed works have impacted the lives of residents, visitors, and business people in a most positive way. Here's a look at some of the development works with project management services delivered by the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago Limited, UDICOT. The Carinage Homework Center. The Carinage Homework Center has become a haven for learning and development for young people who reside in the area. This center features a ground floor library, a study hall and multimedia room, a children's reading and learning center, as well as a staff and administrative office, general storage and washrooms. This beautifully landscaped site with tropical trees and plants facilitates outdoor reading and socialization, enhancing the peaceful, youth-friendly atmosphere. The Carinage Fishing Facility. Fishermen who ply their trade at this modern fishing facility have expressed their satisfaction with how comfortable and customer-friendly the built environment has become. Features of this facility include an administrative building, coal storage, chillers, a warehouse, boat repair facilities, individual boat locker rooms, a net repair area, recreational facilities, parking spaces, and a jetty. Fishermen have reported increased sales as a result of this marked improvement. The Carinage Fish Fry. The Carinage Fish Fry is a food court adjacent to the Carinage Fishing Facility, providing food, entertainment, and an environment for social interaction and quiet relaxation. It adds to Carinage's tourist offerings and is shaping up to be quite a hub of activity. Housed in two single-story buildings, the Fish Fry has 14 vending booths for seafood and other delicacies. Booths are fitted with electrical power, water, facilities for gas supply, and a commercial stainless steel sink. This open-air courtyard, which is paved and centrally located, accommodates dining at table with seating for approximately 150 persons. This space also houses a pavilion for performances outfitted with washrooms, performers changing room, janitor's closet, a storeroom, an administrative office, and parking for 21 vehicles. South of the pavilion is a fully landscaped park which connects to the boardwalk, beach, and water's edge with security lighting and CCTV monitoring. The Carinage Police Station. In constructing the Carinage Police Station, Unicot considered the new direction which modern policing now plays as an integral part of government's development strategy for the security of its citizens. For a long time, officers operated out of a makeshift police station. This station comprises basic spaces such as offices, a public reception area, rooms for private statement, fingerprinting, juvenile holding, ID parade, house lectures, and viewing, a library and gymnasium, appropriate dormitories for male and female officers, a kitchen, a laundry room, a prayer room, and a private office for counseling. These facilities support efforts to ensure police officers are not only well-trained, but also physically and mentally prepared to interact with members of the public. The Diego Martin Sporting Complex. This sporting facility was designed and constructed consistent with recognized international standards for multi-purpose, multi-sport facilities for use by a wide cross-section of stakeholders, including athletes and residents, clubs, associations, and other entities. This complex now adds value since it generates revenue. It achieved a significant milestone, having just recently hosted its first first-class cricket match in a four-day regional game. The facility provides the following amenities. A cricket and football field, a pavilion with a capacity for 2,000 seats, including general and VIP seating, cricket practice nets, concession stands, a VIP lounge, media rooms, 
game officials rooms, a security surveillance room, facilities for home and away teams, outfitted spaces for administrative staff, a gym, and parking for 76 vehicles, inclusive of team buses. The Diego Martin Health Center. Unicot officially opened the doors to the ultra-advanced Diego Martin Health Center on October 6, 2020. This health center is often described as a smaller-sized hospital, given the range of increased services now available. Unicot commissioned a wing of the health center featuring the latest state-of-the-art technology, transforming the space from positive to negative pressure to facilitate the isolation of patients with airborne infectious diseases. Available at this location are the following. Basic healthcare services, wound care, general walk-in services, specialty clinical services inclusive of diabetic eye screening, dental care, imaging services, x-ray ultrasound, Allied health support services such as phlebotomy, HIV testing, dietary counseling, point of care testing, and social welfare services. A fully outfitted gym is also accessible after hours. This health center provides undoubted relief to healthcare workers from stressful operations at the Port of Spain General Hospital, providing more care for patients within the ambit of the Northwest region. On the community development front, the Diego Martin region has witnessed the rebuilding and in some cases the renovation of five community centers at Bagatelle, Diego Martin Central, Pitti Valley, Diego Martin South, and Diego Martin North. They feature training kitchens for the culinary arts, computer rooms, classrooms which also transform into homework centers, auditoriums with stages, lighting, seating and sound systems for theater arts training and performance, gyms, offices, washrooms, access for the differently abled, security booths and car parks. These centers also double as a rental space for hosting events, which put funds back into the upkeep of the center. West Park, West Moorings. Residents of the Western Peninsula no longer have to journey to the Queen's Park Savannah to jog, cycle or exercise in an open, green area because the West Park in West Moorings now satisfies these needs. This cleared open field was leveled, compacted and planted with savanna grass. A jogging path was constructed along the perimeter of the larger open field with soft landscaping. External solar-powered recreational LED lighting fixtures were installed with automatic light sensors and time control for overcharging and discharging protection. This park is also home to an administrative office with public and staff washrooms, change rooms, and a paved car park for 114 vehicles. On the horizon is the Diego Martin Public Library. Construction of this new public library complex will expand the delivery of library and information services to the community of Diego Martin and its environs. Serve as the regional hub for the Books Plus on Wheels mobile library services for the Northern Region. Host spaces for community activities while generating income from enhanced services. The design features prominent green spaces and caters for future expansion. Rentable commercial and performance spaces, such as an auditorium seating approximately 150 persons, exhibit areas, stores and shops, will serve as passive income for the operation and upkeep of the facility. Well, there you have it. A look at the development on the Western Peninsula by the Government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago to improve the lives of the people. Udicott. Signed. Sealed. And delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, providing this evening's entertainment is Mr. Elijah Beckles, of the Invaders Steel Orchestra.
Thank you very much, Elijah. We could have gone on for some more. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly welcome to the lectern the Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Rowley, to deliver the feature address. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies, Nigel. Permit me to acknowledge my cabinet colleagues who are here in surprisingly large numbers. I don't intend to identify you all, but I must acknowledge the Minister of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, under whose portfolio this extension falls, and our Honorable Senator Kazim Hussein and his team from the Ministry of Agriculture. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Avinash Singh and Minister Major De Freitas, they have somewhere here with us. So this is an agriculture event and agriculture and fisheries invited all of the cabinet and surprisingly all of the cabinet apparently is here. I see the Minister of Local Government is also here because this is a local government thing. The Minister of Tourism defied Wasa's big hole in the road and got here on time. And we also have the Minister of Planning and Development, Ms. Vedication, Minister of Works and Transport, Minister of Foreign and Caricom Affairs, Minister of Communication. Should I go on? Yeah. Member of Parliament, Port of Spain South, because Port of Spain South extended into Diego Martin and we are all representing. And we have so many of our younger members of the cabinet as well as the experienced one. But the best and most I can say to you this evening is that you are very welcome to enjoy the ambience in Karanaj and the food that will be produced at this environment. If today you are not served food, I would be surprised. But in case you aren't, please come again when there will be a lot more available when things are fully opened. Because we intend to make this a household location and the list of places to go and list of things to do in Trinidad and Tobago. But ladies and gentlemen, in all seriousness, this is an important occasion for our country. And let me tell you why. Two things. There are some people who only identify government's involvement in expansion and development in what they call big projects. And in fact, some even go as far as to say that the government is only engaged in expenditure on big projects, which is not true. Because any government in any country has certain big projects to do if some significant developments are to take place in the country. A highway is a big project. A major government office complex is a big project, and so on. But parallel to that are these projects like this one, which have been going on from time to time at different paces. And when they go on, they tend to pass on notice, especially when they have a long history of anticipation as this one is. Because this project, for those of you who know Karanaj and those of you who've been using the Western Peninsula, using Chagaramas, I'm sure you would have forgotten what the original facility was here where fish was sold in Karanaj. I'm sure you forgot. But that has been replaced by a very modern facility which costs some substantial money the Karanaj fish market as ex uh, it exists there now. It took some time to sell that project to the planning division. It took some time to get the approvals in parliament. It took a lot of time to get the agreement with the construction. We had difficulties with the contract. But at the end of the day, the government stays the course. Because 
As part of the planning and development program to improve the quality of lives of the citizens of this area, to bring opportunity to them, and to allow the rest of the community to interact with this area, the government stayed the course and we finally were able to open the Karanaj fish market at the time we did, I think, in 2020. And then that was not the end of the vision for the Western Peninsula, especially when the Western Peninsula geographically located in the country has such tremendous potential. Today we are opening this Karanaj, we call it the fish fry. And it's located between the city of Port of Spain and the densely populated area of Diego Martin, because people in Diego Martin are always coming out and going somewhere. And of course, the recreational area of the Chagaramas Peninsula, down towards the golf course, down towards the entertainment center, um, around all of what is down there as the park in, in, in Chagaramas. And of course, right in front of it is a relatively um, slow moving traffic going east and west which will allow people along this route to be able to stop and participate with offerings from this site. It also is located on the waterfront and it allows access to the waterfront by those who would bring the fish in and hopefully in the not too distant future those who would want to come by water to this site and to meet here some carryings on that are very pleasing. Or what are those? You would meet people who can cook. You would meet interesting recipes. You would meet interesting challenges to your palate. And if you come at the right time, mostly like likely on weekends, Friday evening, Saturday evening, even Sunday evenings, you are likely to meet on this bandstand People who can sing, people who can dance, people who can play instruments, people who can demonstrate all aspects of our cultural offerings. And most of them will do so for a reasonable fee. So what does that mean? We've created opportunity for them to earn from their talents. And by building this facility, which is not cheap, but it's extremely useful in the advancement of opportunities for our people. We created 14 concessionaires, but that's not all the jobs. Because you're gonna to have to have some management in place. You're gonna to have to have some maintenance in place. You're gonna to have to have some cleaning in place. You're gonna to have to have everything that keeps and makes this place workable and worthwhile. And I want to emphasize worthwhile. Because today at the opening it is pleasant, it is clean, it is enjoyable, it is welcoming. It is only going to realize its fullest potential if it is kept in a state of being described as worthwhile. People must want to come here. And there must be reasons why other citizens those who live here and others would want to come here. And that is why today I want to appeal to all those who see and know of this place, especially the people of Karanaj, that you have a duty to ensure that this is not a place that becomes rundown, a place where idleness describes its most important activity and worse an environment where incidents of itinerant crime is associated with the location. Those negative developments will ensure that it is not worthwhile for persons to leave elsewhere in the country or to stop in their travails to come here and share what you set out to offer. On the other hand, if it is that place that we envisage where on a Friday evening on a Saturday evening, even in the morning, at midday, there can be breakfast, there can be lunch, there could be evening entertainment. You can take in the sunset here. You can come take in a trip along the water. And where are you going? We're going down to Carnage. You're not sure what's going to go on there, but you do know. You do know that something worthwhile is going on there, and you want to be a part of it. That's what you want to do. You know... 
I was, I've just come in from the United States last night, close to midnight, and I met a number of Trinidad and Tobago people at different parts of where I was. And on many occasions, the conversation arose about the quality of what we were enjoying and the quality of what you were viewing. And we came to the conclusion every time that you know when people from Trinidad and Tobago come here, they have no difficulty in cooperating and participating in maintaining what we are enjoying. We have an attitude of devaluing what we have here in Trinidad and Tobago. Whether it is people, whether it is culture, whether we devalue it. But when we go in other people's places, where there are rules and regulations and enforcement of laws and rules and regulations, we marvel at what they have to offer. I say there's no difference in what they can do as against what we can do. You would have heard that there was some mention of us trying to create here in Carnage what exists in Barbados at Oystens. Anybody who's been to Barbados for a vacation and didn't go to Oystens on a Thursday night or a Friday night, you haven't completed your vacation. And Oystens fish fry is an integral part of the tourism product. Most people, you ask a Bajan, where should I go tonight? The first place they will tell you is Oystens. And we have the raw material here to have the same thing develop here. We have the fish, we have the culinary skills, we have the government infrastructural support, and we have the location. And we can make that a permanent station in our tourism product, including our external tourism, not just local tourism, but external tourism. But to do that, there has to be some discipline in the management of the environment. Without that, this place is going to become just another location, another attempt which has failed. But I have confidence that the same way Udicott stayed on the job and got the structure built for the fishing facility and got this built as conceptualized and that our local contractors delivered this facility that if we do what is required to be done, we too can have our carinage where Barbados has its oysters. You go to big cities, you go to San Francisco, big, big city. There's a place like this on the waterfront where the fisher folk have made a name for themselves and where all those who come from, wherever they come from, if you don't get down on the waterfront in, in San Francisco to participate in that, your vacation is not complete. I have confidence that we could do that here. We can do that here. To do so, we have to emphasize the positives and de-emphasize the negatives. Because among us, unfortunately, there are some of our citizens who only see the negative side of things. We have to emphasize what is possible. And don't encourage, in a facility like this, conduct that is inimical to the vision that exists here. It's a relatively open facility. It has to be like this for the ambience to be what it's supposed to be. It doesn't mean it's a free for all. This is a public place, yes, and you're free to come in, yes, but you're not going to be free to come and do as you please when you come here and drag it down to a place that is not worthy. Because one of the strengths of this place is its closeness to the police station. And today I'm asking the senior officer at Carnage Police Station to ensure that this facility is patrolled at all times and that proper law enforcement takes place here and nobody is to come and start help any shack here and no association of shack vendors will be allowed here because the standard has to be of such that all of us must be proud of this place.
and I'm appealing to those people who have been fortunate to become denizens of the entrance there and our concessioners that your business will only prosper if this place is clean, welcoming, and a happy place. If the opposite exists, those doors will be closed and you'll be on your own joining the crowd of those who say the government and do nothing. The government of Trinidad and Tobago, meaning all the other citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, they would have contributed to this for you. And I want you to acknowledge that by being the best server of the best food in the best location. Yes, Minister Mitchell, the best location, the best food. Huh? And if you want to come compete, you can compete. As a matter of fact, that may be one of the interesting things, that some of your people can come here sometimes. I know people can go down to San Fernando because those of you who are now familiar with the San Fernando waterfront, wonderful things are happening there in San Fernando because we are getting done, not just the big projects, but also a number of smaller projects like this that have far-reaching consequences and opportunities for our people. We're getting it done. What I'm particularly proud about with this project is that to be able to do this this evening is testimony to what we were able to do during the COVID period. This facility was built largely during the COVID period. It was available a little earlier, but we couldn't do that because we didn't want to congregate as we are congregating this evening. Hopefully, in the not too distant future, we would want to take the masks off and allow you to be um, I, I am expecting to hold discussions with the Ministry of Health soon to see whether we can allow you to have mask as a voluntary action against uh, having it um, dictated to you by law because it appears to me I was, I was out of the country and it seems as though your nervousness of COVID has disappeared. <laughs> I have seen so many gatherings without a mask being present. And you had me very, very concerned, and I counted the days, and I looked at the outcome, and it appears as though we can be a whole lot more interactive without being irresponsible. So it may be that the mask may come off very soon. And we would, while not declaring COVID over, we would be able to say that we have gone through a significant challenge of the COVID-19. But during that period, we were able to build a facility like this and open it now as part of our recovery. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the government functions on a step-by-step -step basis. Now that we have done what we have done here today, the work doesn't end. We move on to somewhere else in the country and get their project, whatever it might be, done and move on to another and to another. And at the end of the day, there'll be overall development for all of us. So we can come out, and I take it that the large turnout of government officials here, from the Attorney General to the Member of Parliament for St. Anne's East, where they do things very quietly and don't invite us, <laughs> thinking that they can escape up there in the valley, and um, we have the minister, of, the minister responsible for that hole in the road this evening, <laughs> Minister Wasa. <laughs> we are hoping that we will all work together as we are doing now to get a number of these relatively small projects done in communities to have this kind of impact on improving the quality of life sharing it with others by creating these uh, aspects of our presentation that we can share with others outside of our community and outside of our country. Karen Arjan Digo Martin and Shagaramas are well-known locations, but there are other locations in this country which are not as well-known, but have some kind of potential that might even be unique. I'm sure some of you are ready are thinking about Tobago Carnival in October. All of these things will contribute to an improvement in our effort to strengthen and broaden our economy 
And as long as we do them right and keep them right, the growth that we are after would be realized. And today, on behalf of the board of Udicott, who I did not specially acknowledge early on, but I must do so now, you would have seen the presentation early on about what has been accomplished in the Western Peninsula. That is only a part of what Udicott has been able to deliver, given the responsibility as the executing agent. And I must say that it pleases me from time to time to be able to point out the successful completion of works done by a department that has been tasked to do those works and get them done come hell or high water. That is Unicat. I want to congratulate the board, chairman and board, and the management and technical and other staff members of Unicat for being a trailblazer in demonstrating what the people of Trinidad and Tobago can do where good order prevails and an intention to do better is the order of the day. Yudhikar, thank you very much for all of this facility. All of this facility from the fish, the fishing market to the fish fry and also the other projects that you are engaged in in this peninsula and elsewhere in the country. I will hold out Yudhikar to many other entities in this country to say the can-do attitude is what makes the difference. Whether it is rebuilding the parliament or building the, the fish fry, it is the can-do attitude that gets us there. And I'm particularly pleased, knowing some of the staff at Udicott, that the driving force in that are young people, especially young females in Trinidad and Tobago. I trust that in the not too distant future we'll meet again somewhere in the country, hopefully in the Western Peninsula, but I'm sure that we'll meet somewhere else to celebrate the completion. And I want to congratulate and thank the contractor and his staff for getting it done so tastefully and thank the architect that designed it because some of us had an idea what it could be without knowing that it would be like this. I am very pleased, very satisfied, and on behalf of the people of Karanaji in particular, Lance Meter, Lan, uh, uh, and all of us here in the Western Peninsula, we want to say a hearty thank you to all who are involved. And we put this now in the hands of the ladies and gentlemen who will be delivering, as we conceptualize, the officers who will keep us safe, those who work at the station next door, and those who travel in the Western Peninsula who will stop here and enjoy the victuals as prepared. And hopefully, you know, these projects have a way of generative other things. All that's missing from this here now is the pier. That is to be built here so that the boats can come in, offload their passengers, even on a party night, safely offload on a pier here. They enjoy something here and they go back out if that's their intention, or you can come here and take the boat and go out. Because what is missing from this area now is a useful and usable pier. We did have one, but it was built from concrete and steel, and of course, you know what the sea does to that. Next time, we'll try something else, and that's Unicot's next assignment, to get a pier built here so that the full potential of this facility can be realized for all of us in Trinidad and Tobago and our international visitors. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. I will do a quick vote of thanks. Uh, recapping on our program, we want to thank Father Harold Imamsha and Pastor Michael Braffitt for their opening prayers. Um, thank you, Mr. Signal Jack, also for your, of the Chairman of the Diego Martin Regional Corporation for your welcoming remarks. Uh, thank you, Senator the Honorable Randall Mitchell and Senator the Honorable Kazim Hossein for your remarks. We want to thank our entertainers for today, Elijah Beckles, the Stardust Steel Orchestra and Invader Steel Orchestra. We want to thank the producers of the video presentation. Uh, thank you, Honorable Prime Minister, for your future address. 
A special thank you to UDICOT, the management and staff of UDICOT, and all who labored to make today possible. Thank you, members of the media. This part of our ceremony brings us to the unveiling of the commemorative stone, after which the Prime Minister and his entourage will proceed to the area for the cutting of the ribbon. We ask that you remain seated during this process. Ever experienced an unexpected power outage? The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management has some.